Today we're back to the uh, spiritual fruit, and today we're doing the spiritual fruit of faith. It's next up, so um, you know, I, I do have a, a, a couple things today. I, I have to say that we're going to have a, a baby dedication after service, so when we're finished, uh, if you could please just stay in your seats, and uh, we'll have the baby dedication together as a congregation. And um, tomorrow is uh, Prophet Steve's wife, my mother, Mrs. Poshumis's birthday. It's tomorrow, right? Yeah? Well, we, uh, if you get an opportunity, just uh, say hello and, and, and wish her the best. Um, as you know, the generation before us has put a lot in to get us here. So it's nice to uh, pay respects for that. So let's open in prayer. And we'll move forward. Uh, Father God, Yahava, we just thank you and we praise you and we worship you, Father God, for your word and for your son and for what you bring into our lives, for the way that you have made, Father, to be able to restore ourselves back to you. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins, known and unknown against you, Father, and your holy covenant. We just come against the powers of darkness. We do not permit you and we bind you up from anything that you would want to do to come and interfere with the message that we have here today. You are bound. You are released. But we loose the angels to go forth, Father, to move in our hearts, to move in this message, Father, to massage our hearts, to understand, to draw this inside of us. To, to bring this to reality and life for it to be part of who we are moving forward. And we just thank you, Father, and believe in the fact that that is done as we go through this. And all this, Father, that we ask of you, we thank you. We ask of you in Yeshua's name. Amen. So today, when I was praying, I used the word Yahava. And it's interesting in talking to Prophet Steve, who's going to be preaching tomorrow, is going to talk about that. And he's going to talk about some more things, about darkness and the deception of darkness and what darkness has done with words that get us to think and create images that go in the wrong direction when we think we're going in the right direction lots of times. And the effects that that has in our lives, the spiritual world, and other people's lives. But I'm not going to preach his sermon today. We're going to go back to the fruit of faith. And the fruit of faith itself, I'll say in the very beginning, is the key. Is the key to faith. With faith is the key. And it's the key to the spiritual fruit. So, as we said before a couple times, we're going to put on our Holy Ghost hip waders today. So just take a second, pull yourself together, and just prepare yourself to sit and absorb as we go through this because we're really going to, you know, turn the spiritual fruit of faith. And we're going to look at it from a bunch of different directions so that we can understand it better to make it more of a reality in our life. But to me, the spiritual fruit, when it comes to the spiritual fruit laid out by the Father God, it is, you know, people would say it's not the most glamorous. Well, that would be your flesh talking. But it is the most important series that we're going to do. And our spirit truly believes that. What, to me, without the spiritual fruit in action, we're going to have zero effect in the other kingdom. We're going to have zero effect in what we want to be able to accomplish here because of the requirements that come with the spiritual fruit. We're all learning the spiritual fruit. We're not perfect in it, but we're moving forward. But to me, the key of spiritual fruit, the key of it is the fruit of faith to be able to access and really mature the other spiritual fruit and for your faith projects that you have in your life. The spiritual fruit of faith has a role to play in faith itself and those projects to be effective, if at all. And if anything, today, as we go through this message, my belief, my hope, is that an understanding comes about the relationship of the spiritual fruit of faith and the relationship within faith itself and thereunto the power of faith. But as always, as we've gone through this, we're going to read 
from Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Such against such there is no law. And we've explained that. But we're going to move on today with another verse in 24. And they that have our Christ have crucified flesh with the affliction and lust. Now we're just going to take that verse for a minute. We're going to think about it. We've crucified our flesh with affliction and lust. And, and when you read those words, you know, it's hard to really create an image from today about what that exactly is talking about. So what I did is I, I, I use e-sword. So I use e-sword and the dictionaries and, and the things that they have and the tools. And I, and I took a couple words, crucified, flesh, afflictions, and lust. And I went and I picked words that we could in place there, meaning the same. But when we read this time, I think the image thereof that you will create will be something that you can use, better use, in your life and where we're at today. So I'll read it. They that our Christ have selfishly, selflessly, whoops, selflessly subdued their carnal human nature with undergoing pain and suffering and with willingly long, longing and desire. That reads so much more different when you look at the words and the image that is created when you do take the time to study and when you create the correct image about it. Because what's happened? Over the years, things have been distorted and it's a trick of darkness to come in and distort things in our lives so that we create a different image. And there's so many different factors within that. Creating an image without historical legalism, deception from Satan, taught to us historically from the first church of the righteous, the churches that we've come out of, and understanding that they were trying the best that they could at that time, and from society and the societies that we've come out of, and the world, and the worldview that's being shifted and shaped by Satan himself. See, when we implement the spiritual fruit, so we've got love, peace, joy, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, and by doing that, when you're implementing those, you are selflessly subduing the carnal nature. You're implementing the fruit of the Spirit instead of your carnal nature. So you're going to go under, what, the pain, the long suffering of producing fruit within yourself and pulling out those things that you had seeded in? Or when other people within the group, the organization, are producing something that doesn't line up the fruit, you have to produce the fruit? of the Spirit, doing it willingly, longing with desire. See, willing is important. If not, you're undecided on your hurt. You have to do it willingly. You have to be decided not to take the hurt, the hurt that is driven by deception by Satan. See, if not, you're just climbing the ladder of commitment, right? And you're not really going anywhere because you're working off of these programmed images all the time. These things that you've been pounding at you and pounding at you and shaping the way that you look at the world. And those are the things that we need to tear down and replace with the Word of God, strengthened with the fruit to be able to reflect the image of Yeshua. But we need to do this and acknowledge that this is a process. This is the warfare that we are born into, we just must be aware of what's going on so that we can actively subdue the carnal human nature. Now again, that's the little phrase that we put together came from the word flesh. See, in Galatians 5.19, now we're going to talk about the bad stuff. Now the works of the flesh, right? The human carnal nature, right? Coming, coming in. Manifest, so when we say manifest, it appears, it's open to you, it's presented to you. And those things are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. A few more of those in the fruit, isn't there? But that's what is presented to the flesh. That's what appears and is open to the flesh. So now we've laid a bit of a, a, a groundwork, a foundation 
if you will, so that now we can get in and we're going to start talking about faith. Okay? Now, faith is, from the Greek dictionary, faithfulness and loyalty. So the fruit of faith is faithfulness and loyalty. Okay, well, what are we faithful and loyal to? Think about it. What are you faithful and loyal to? Well, the fruit of faith, that is your faithfulness and your loyalty to the Lord thy God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And it is secondly, it's on to where you were placed in the fivefold ministry to learn, and what I'm saying is, what you're doing in the army of God. That's what your faithfulness and your loyalty is with the production of the fruit of faith. See, loyalty and faithfulness to authority, there's authority, there's tons of authority, but in this world today, where's it gone? Our society has been trained into throwing that away. To, it doesn't mean anything anymore. In this world, within God, within organizations, within everything, faithfulness and loyalty. It's been pulled apart, ripped down, and, and trampled upon. And today, what do we have? We have leaders with no real, what? No real base to learn from because it's falling away. So what, what, what fixed points do the, the body and everybody have to follow and admonish within leadership? You know, what's happening is, and we understand that God is restoring his army. He is restoring absolutely what needs to be done in the fivefold ministry. And there's many generations before us that have gone in and start to brought us to where we're at today. But our understanding is we are in the last generations. We are a quick work. And we're going to see the restoration of the, of the, of the spiritual fruit of faith within loyalty and faithfulness onto the Lord thy God and into the leadership itself and the army. We're going to see and experience this within our lifetime. And it is something that is not understood today. See, the fivefold is being led by God to feed what? To feed each other. To feed what? To feed the body. Some are newer, some are older in being led by the Holy Ghost. And so is the body. We all are. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to move forward. But we're in the restoration business. We're not in the perfection business, meaning we're perfect today. We're in the perfection business to attain that maturity, to attain perfection, but it is something that we are striving together for, and that is essential why we have to have the fruit of the Spirit, so that what? So we can what? Help each other, so we can choose to move each other forward, to pull from the fruit of the Spirit, so what? So we're not turning around and pulling from Galatians 5.19 through 21, which is the anti-fruit is what we refer to it is, or the hurt and the pain and the deception that comes in, and apply those things, and we're weighing each other down. We're not in that business anymore. We're not in that business. We're in the restoration. We're in the fruit production business. But how many years, how many years have gone on where there has been hurt? There has been so much hurt to the loyalty of God. We are the tip of the spear. We are the first fruits. And when you are growing a tree and the tree is young or the first tree of the season, the first fruit is the sweetest. It is the sweetest. And for us as first fruits, the pain, the suffering, willingly to go through it, willingly, longing and desiring to what? To tear down all of that anti-fruit, the Galatians 5, 19 through 21, and not let it exist, not create it, and choose the fruit so that what? Leadership within the fivefold, leadership within the body can raise themselves up through attaching themselves to that so others can come in and see it. It is a sweet thing to be able to have the opportunity to subdue your flesh, your carnal human nature. It is a sweet thing to undergo the pain and the suffering of what you need to go through. So what? So it's easier for others to come along, to see and to understand, and things can exponentially move forward in this time, which the Father's Word said will happen. 
It is a great thing to be where we are. Never, ever, ever forget that. Never forget it. But it comes to this question. What is hurt? What is hurt? You know? The me, the myself, the I, the poor me. You know, not truly having loyalty to Yahweh, our Lord, our God. And if there's no loyalty, what's going to happen? How can we help each other? How can the fivefold help the body if they have their loyalty is not there to Yahweh? See, it only comes to be able to admonish the leadership and to move it forward as they're growing within what? Their understanding and their growth and their loyalty to the Lord thy God. And demonstrating that. So it can be seen, so people can activate it and move it forward, because we're in the restoration business. We're also realists in the fact of how it's going to happen and how we're going to move forward. Restoration, selfishly subduing the carnal human nature, undergoing pain and suffering and doing it willingly and longing and with desire, looking to it, wanting it, chasing it. But how do we get to that place? How, do we, how did we get to the place where we weren't doing those things? How did we get in? And this is where we come to the word hurt. This is the word hurt that comes in. It's been hurt on both sides. It's been hurt within the fivefold ministry. The entire army, the body, have been hurt in hurting each other because of what? Their recognition of Galatians 5.19 through 21 and giving it life. So hurt... And, and, and I had to go through this, and it was, it was interesting for me. And I looked it up again, and it says, of certain derviation. And I pronounce that right, okay? And I know once in a while I get a word wrong up here, and thank you for forgiving me for making mistakes from time to time. And I see a few snuckles once in a while, because people know, oops, Matt did it again. But right here, I had to go look that word up, because it looked like other words I've spelled before, and I, had to, and I did the sound thing. You know, you hit the sound, and it reads it to you. I'm like, that's what it said. I'm like, there's no way that's a real word. So I go look up this word. So it says, the obtaining or developing of something from a source or origin. Okay? But it also went on and it said, mischief, false, wicked, idol. So what I pulled from that was hurt, coming through deception from darkness, is an uncertain Outside, uncertain, false, wicked idol. That's what's being presented to you when you are offended. It happens in the spiritual realm is where it happens. We do it here, we activate it, we cannot see it, we cannot touch it. But it happens in the spiritual realm. It is one of the greatest deceptions, devices that Satan has to get through into your mind is hurt. Hurt. And then it seeds into your heart and we understand the teachings on seed. We understand all that. And then once it's seeded in there, guess what? It opens the door, opens, and then what comes in? Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh manifest. The uncertain, false, wicked idols manifest because you were hurt. Because you believe the deception to open that up and allow that in. See, Satan knows as long as you do not have spiritual fruit, you cannot produce spiritual fruit. And if you do not have it, you cannot multiply it. You cannot multiply your spiritual fruit. You'll be no effect towards darkness on the face of this earth and all the days that have been allotted to you. But we're going to be effective. We've had words spoken over us. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's going to get done. And if you're not producing spiritual fruit, you will be no effect, no matter what, on the days that you have on the face of this earth. See, when we're talking about hurt and deception, as long as you receive the hurt, as long as you receive it, now let's, let's, take, let's talk about hurt for a minute. You hurt what? The, the flesh, the mind. They said that about me. Well, I think maybe that happened. I don't know. Remember that time from before? 
well, this is stupid. I know what happened before. This is going to happen again. Like, you can imagine the amount of hurt that you've had in your life. The amount of offenses that you've had against yourself, okay, against your brothers and sisters, who, again, are also going through hurt and and, and fighting deception and losing at times, all trying their best to move towards the Father, but yet we keep choosing hurt and allowing it to have life. We have to learn to be able to immediately recognize hurt is coming in and it's deception. It cannot be. It can never happen. That could never happen with my brother or my sister. And then look for the fruit because you studied it, right? And you know what they are, right? Because you know them. And you go to a scripture that you have and then you pull that in and that hurt and the deception doesn't come. And guess what? You have activated your spiritual fruit of faith within other fruit. That hurt didn't come in and that deception and you're getting even closer to the destiny that you have in your life. An effect that you're going to have on other people in the body. Because you understand it's a restoration process. And your neighbor is going through it the exact same way you are. And you're going to choose to immediately forgive them. Immediately. Before hurt even finishes exactly what it's going to try and say to you and present to you. Not they're forgiven. They're forgiven. I'm forgiven. We're all forgiven. It's to be learned. It's to be learned. But you cannot receive that hurt. You cannot receive it. Because if you receive it, you do not have the production of the spiritual fruit of faith. You have the production of what? What Satan wants you to produce. Satan. He wants you to produce things that are not the spiritual fruit. He was presenting to you through him, through what? Through what? Demons? Through familiar spirits? Through his whole, what? His whole army? To go out, their job is to present to you, Galatians 5 through 19, in a form of hurt to try and get through the knock on the door and get in. So you let it in. So it can be created in this world. We are to have dominion over them. They're not to have dominion over us. And this is the essence of what we're talking about, of when warfare happens. See, spiritual fruit is offense and defense. We must understand that. Satan knows if you produce spiritual fruit, he's in trouble and his whole army's in trouble. Because against such there is no law. They lose every single time. And if they can get you to not produce your loyalty to God or loyalty to the fivefold ministry in the body, what are you going to do? You're not going to produce anything in that rebellion. And if they can get you to not do that, to, to just stay away or always be better and have your hurt fixated in that, You are absolutely on no effect in this world. You are on cruise control. You are off to the side and you're going to bump into things in life and they're not going to worry about you. But when you snap out of it, when you understand the simplicity of the lie and then everything that comes in behind it and you can recognize that hurt and the deception when it comes and know what behinds it is wrong and then you understand to go to the Father and to produce the fruit You are on defense and offense, and you are well on your way. But the spiritual fruit of faith, your loyalty, must be there. Must be there. See, if he can deceive you into thinking that the the five-fold ministry, and you don't need to be under it, you know, you are deceived, you are hurt. Suggestions from darkness come in and all sorts of other things. Then that seed grows. Remember, the flesh, uncertain, false, wicked idols. Galatians 5.19. See, Satan's attack on the, on the faith and the power thereof is the deception towards the spiritual fruit, towards the spiritual fruit of faith. And faith cannot and will not work. I mean, God is going to wink. Remember, God winks at a few situations that you're going to have in your life. Yeah, 
That's to get you on your way. It's kind of like a little push, you know? But he cannot and he will not and God will not wink in our lives forever. We have this thing and this responsibility to be able to work with him and straighten out the spiritual fruit of faith in our life. And I know at times it could seem so complex, but in actuality, it is so simple. It's just that the bombardment that comes in from the army of darkness comes in and comes in and comes in. (coughs) And then you have the spiritual fruit of faith that you're trying to produce and your loyalty to God and all the things that are going to come with it. But you're getting bombarded and bombarded and bombarded. When you learn to stand and take the authority and then you go through the process that God has with you when you take that authority and you have the understanding and it's real to you in your life, that bombardment isn't such a bombardment anymore. You can handle it. You've been given what you need to handle it. But you've got to stick with your loyalty to the Lord thy God to be able to move forward in that. See, when we, when we pray, our prayers go to the throne room, Right? Well, hopefully they make it there. But pre-adventure, the prayers go to the throne room. Or we go to the throne room, okay? Work with me here. Then what do we do when we go there? Are we bringing in all of the hurt and the pain, the Galatians 5, 19 through 21 with us? Are, are, are we bringing that with us unknowingly to God? See, we are the temple of God. We are to love the Lord thy God as our neighbor, right? Our job within this temple is to burn up, if you will, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, in our lives, right? And when it's being presented to us, using the fruit to keep it away, burning it up is a sweet thing to the Lord God. Pray, be bold when you go into the throne room. Go to the Father. Talk to Him. Ask Him in His Son's name. Tell Him of the fruit that you produce. Tell Him of what's been presented to you through hurt and deception and what you've burned up and will not allow in. Remind Him. Remind Him. Remind yourself. God. God loves it. To show what? The glory. He loves to stand up and say, look at the glory my son, my daughter has brought. Look what they burned up. Look at the fruit they have. Look at the faith project they have going on. Look at this. Look at the glory they brought to me. Amazing. And then what happens? You start to understand a little bit deeper about spiritual warfare and the faith thereof. And guess what? all of a sudden, some of these faith projects that you have start to manifest. Some of these things and these blessings start to manifest in your life because the loyalty that you have to God and his processes and what's happening in the fivefold, the loyalty that you have to it, the faithfulness that you have to it, you're producing more of it. It's like your your attachment is stronger. You're pulling. You're pulling. And these things start to happen in your life. And people wonder why, and wonder why, why, what's going on? Like, I'm, 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 I understand faith, and I'm activating in a certain way. Understanding the faithfulness of the fruit of the Spirit as part of faith, and the loyalty to the Lord thy God. And are you dropping your loyalty during all of these presentations and bombardment coming over from darkness that you're not necessarily always aware of, and you're allowing in deception, you're allowing in hurt and other things, and then it just, it's there, and it's in, it's unknowingly. And then you don't have the spiritual fruit of faith and production, maybe what's required. And then all of a sudden you're wondering, why is my faith project not working the way I would like it to, or other things in your life? Loyalty. Loyalty. What are you loyal to? Are you unknowingly loyal to darkness and what they're presenting to you in a situation, not the entirety of your life? See, it comes to your spirit, not your mind. God talks to your spirit, not your mind. You don't feel it. It's not something felt. 
No, I, I sat down with our mentor, Prophet Tom, and he explained to me while we were talking about something. And he, as he and I were talking, he said, just a minute, just a minute. So I, I obviously just sat there, looked up. He goes, okay, okay. And he had an answer for me. It was a good answer. It was a good answer from the Father. But what he didn't allow was, he didn't allow his mind, his flesh, to get involved. He was reaching, and the answer came back, and he didn't let his mind get involved. His loyalty to God, spiritual fruit of faith in action, his loyalty to God, not his mind, not the things that could have been presented to him by darkness. He put it all aside, he let it be quiet, and he pulled down from the other kingdom from the throne room, and the right answer was given. And what an example it was for me to sit and watch and digest that over time, but I was very fortunate in the fact that my mentor, your mentor, Prophet Tom Deckard, further explained to me what went on. And he said, look, it came. It didn't come. What well, comes, he said, it comes through the body. It comes through the mind. And then it comes to you, who you really are, your heart, your spirit. And then it comes out from there. He says, I did not allow my mind, my flesh, to get involved so that the right answer could come forward. And he, and he explained to me, he says, this is to be learned. This is to be learned. And, and for me, it was an amazing experience, and I was very fortunate, and I, and I thank the Lord God for, for that. But it goes back to what we talked about before. 33% of comes from what? Your mind? Remember we divided it up, we gave ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Remember that a couple weeks ago? So 33% from your mind, 33% from familiar spirits, and 33% from God, like the Word of God, God Himself, etc. But we gave ourselves the benefit of the doubt, and we said, okay, 60% from, because, you know, we're a little mature. And all 40% comes from our mind or from familiar spirits. So not all our thoughts of our own, right? So in that, the trial of your faith comes, the warfare for your mind, so that the spirit wins. Through exercising what? Your righteousness. Through exercising the selfless subduing of the carnal human nature while undergoing pain and suffering, pulling those things out, not allowing them in, and do this willingly with longing and desire. And that's exactly what he did. What a great example. The patience in that. See, the mind and the flesh... It has an opinion. It has an opinion all the time. We have to be able to take the time and understand when that, uh, no, no, it's no longer 66, it's 40%. And when that 40% comes, we stop. We just don't go blah, blah. Because every time that you just take that and you just start talking and going, you know what you hear? You also hear what? This is our, I'm a fruit tree all of a sudden. You hear bloop, bloop, bloop. You hear your fruit dropping. You hear your fruit dropping. All this work that you prepared and put into starts to drop. Because what? That 40% you took, you didn't take the time, you didn't have the patience, you didn't keep your spiritual fruit of faith, your loyalty to God, you just took whatever was presented and you just ran with it. We're in the fruit production business. Don't take the deception and the hurt. Take a minute. Maybe don't answer. Say, I'm going to pray about that. i got to talk to God about it and put it on my list. Whatever you got to do. The flesh, the mind, what a trick, what a trick. But we have to understand that, and this is real important, with the mind and reminding your mind and telling your flesh, look, God's going to get this done without you. And this is me talking to my flesh. We don't need you. God doesn't need you. Not if you're going to try and keep getting in charge. He doesn't need that. God's word's going to go forward and get it done anyway, with or without you. This is me talking to me, okay? So I, my spirit, am in charge. You are going to sit down and shut up. And we're going to go fulfill. But you work for me. I don't work for you. 
And if you keep interfering and we have too much trouble, life is going to turn into a thing of brown. And then what's going to happen? God's going to get someone else and he's going to get it done anyway because everyone is replaceable. The flesh doesn't like that. The mind doesn't like that. But reminding it, putting it in its place, needs to and should be done. God's word is going to get it done anyway. It doesn't come back, what, void, failed? It's going to get it done. Why fight? Why fight? See, it doesn't require to have our soul, our mind, our flesh's input. You know, for us to stop and take that and, and speak that in, into, into the situation. God doesn't need that. We have to transition willingly to subdue our carnal nature, to subdue this flesh, this mind, and to subdue by pulling from the Father and the fruit over here and standing and subdue what? This horde, this army that's attacking us and lobbing things at us all the time and standing our ground being loyal to the situation, being loyal to God, and producing the spiritual fruit of faith. But the mind, the, the I, the me, right? It wants to do the Spirit's job. It wants the Spirit's job. It wants the recognition. It wants it. But we have to stop it. You know, unbelief is faith cancellation. You know, when we get into faith cancellation, we're placing obstacles in our life or other people's lives. You know, as our mentor taught us, spending time tearing things down in the spirit, words that were spoken against you or yours, tearing them down, spending the time tearing them down and tearing them down. So in the spirit world, it's not having that negative effect in your life. See, people talk idle words. I-D-L-E. And really, when we go back and we look at that, those are really idle words coming in, uncertain things that are coming in, not from the Father, pulling, influenced by darkness. Words from the soul, words from the mind. You know, they're canceling. They're dropping your fruit. Just take the time. Don't drop your spiritual fruit of faith. Don't drop your loyalty to God in this false anxiousness that comes up that doesn't exist what's being presented to you and stick to what stick to your loyalty to the lord thy god see the deception you know is that you think that you're working for god all the time even if you're quoting scripture and you're doing things but yet you're going to be going around and you attach yourselves to this hurt right and then what? This hurt is more real. The things that are attached to the hurt in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, what are you doing? You are trying to usurp God in his word with this deception. I mean, this is the greatest trick that Satan plays. It comes in all forms. Who else put himself above God? Who else tried to usurp God's word? That's right. Satan. Satan himself. And what is he trying to do? And what is he trying to do with his army, his horde, in the spirit realm? Is to what? Present things to you so that you, what? Usurp what? God's word. You're attached to them. And many, many, many times it's unknowing. You're unknowing, but you're doing it. You're doing it as a believer. You're doing it when, what? When you're going and you're praying to the Lord thy God and you want this and you need this and you need that and, and all these things, but yet you're attached and you've attached yourself to this hurt and this deception and these lies and you're presenting that to the Lord thy God at the same time you're trying to produce some fruit and present it. What does he really see? What are you really presenting to him? And then we expect and demand what? All of a sudden, things to be happening in our lives. All these blessings, our faith projects to come forward. Well, I'm tired. I don't want to work so hard for it. Ugh. It's your job. It's your job. Just get over it. Do it. Get it done. 
or keep going through the spot that you're in and rotating for the rest of your life and blaming worse and worse everyone else except yourself and what you need to change and what you need to not be attached to and what you need to attach to and what you need to present to the Lord God so you can have anything. Hurt. But it hurts. I gotta let it go. I gotta act different. I gotta think different. See, force, for, uh, force, force is a force. Faith is a force. It's a force. It's a very, very, very powerful force from God. His energy. It is used, what? It's used for good. Can faith be used by darkness? Well, what are you going to believe in? What are you believing in? What are you attaching yourself to? Faith is a force. You're going to believe in what? God? And what he's presenting? Or you're going to believe in what Satan is presenting? The deception. He's just not going to lay it out for you the way that it really is. It's a deception. See, the fruit of faith, it sounds like faith an awful lot. So faith itself, the force of faith, you know, is, is the, the absolute total key to your walk. The absolute total key, total key. So when you take faith, and, you, and if you could look at faith, it's real interesting the way that it is. It's made up of what? You got the spiritual fruit of faith. You have faith itself. And then you have what? The, the, the power, the gifting of faith. Faith is made up of those things. It is over into the fruit of the Spirit. It's in the gifts. And you have faith itself all tied together within faith. How can you produce faith if you're not loyal to God? And if you're not loyal to God in the fruit of faith, how can you have the exercise and execute faith so the power of faith can work in the other kingdom and pull into this kingdom the result of your faith? It's all tied together. I'm not cutting it up. I'm just talking about components of it. Faith is produced by hearing, and that's in Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And it's your spirit that's hearing the word. It's your spirit. Now your mind's going to get it, and I know they got competitions out there for people to remember stuff and all that. But your mind's not going to get you there. Your spirit is going to get you there. And it's studying to show yourselves approved. And hearing it, and hearing it, and hearing it, and having conversations about it, and talking about it at dinner, and when you study at night, when you get up in the morning, and not being around that crowd gives you an opportunity to hear it over here because you were with the right crowd who's participating in it. It is a lifestyle. It's not just standing there reading the Bible over and over and over again. It is taking that Bible and applying it in with your whole life and activating it within your life. It's a lifestyle, but it's in your spirit, in your spirit, in your spirit. And then what? And then you're producing fruit within yourself. You're producing fruit within other people, within the body. And now we're in the fruit production business because we're hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God over and over and over and over. See, people get into fantasy bubbles. We'll talk about fantasy bubbles. Fantasy bubbles are presented, right? Deception. And somebody could be praying and they say, I'm gonna, I need $150,000 to get out of debt. That's a lot of money, $150,000. And they say, yep, God told me. I prayed and, and I spent the time and someone's going to come with a check tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, $150,000. Now, everybody knows what the odds of that happening is. Everybody put a big zero up, big zero. Got a zero over there, got a zero. Anyone else? Zero. Got some zeros. Oh, oh, oh there's a zero in the back. So what happens is, it's a fantasy bubble. It's been conjured up, it's been presented to your mind, around, around the back door, the side door, it came in, you didn't see it, snuck in there, and all of a sudden there's an influence, and you went, yeah, it's God, woo! Of course, it's an answer. Uh, you know, and then what do you do? Well, then you pick one scripture, and you said, yep, God can do all things. Oh, look, your mind went out and picked up a scripture. Oh, isn't that great? picked up one scripture. Now, God can do all things, but 
you know what? There's a whole lot of other scriptures we need to reference. And then guess what? There's a whole lot of other circumstances we have to pull in. And then guess what? Oh yeah, God obeys his own rules. So I don't think we can just pick that scripture and run with it or pray and we had a pink Cadillac and a, a trunk full of money just because we you know, spent 20 minutes praying. There's more to it. We have to go through learning experiences for us to be able to fall, to stumble, so that we can understand where we failed. So we can clean up the mess behind us when we failed and the mess that we kind of caused with a few other people because we don't want them hurt. And we want to move forward. We don't want these, these idols that accidentally got in, these, these presentations from, from darkness. So what do we do? We, we say, Lord God, Yahweh, Yahweh uh, we reconnect. We, we want to uh, forgive us in your son, Yeshua's name. So we what? We, we reestablish ourselves. We reconnect ourselves. And then we go through and we explain what we did and we ask forgiveness. We're forgiven. And, and then we go through. And then we have to go and we have to create. And we're going to create what? We're going to create that spiritual fruit again that we dropped. And then we're going to multiply it. And then when the warfare comes, because they understand the spiritual fruit that we're making, we have to subdue it and not let it up subdue us. We are in the army. We're in the army. We are in warfare. It's a warfare lifestyle. And the fruit of the Spirit is your offense and your defense. So what would we have learned if we would have got the $150,000 from God? What have we got? We would have said what? Oh, Lord, perfect. I can ask anything I want anytime. I can live the way I want. I can do anything I want. Oh, we, can then, we don't have to be righteous. We don't have to be holy. What else? Well, we could just curse each other. Why? Because we're not following any rules. God follows the rules. We follow the rules. There's rules to these things. And that's why there's divine purpose for all of us in the trials and the tribulations and the things that we have to go through. The growing up in our faith. The growing up in understanding the spiritual fruit of faith and the loyalty that is required of us so that our fruit can remain. So we can strengthen our other fruit so they can do what they need to do. God has something planned for all of us. And when he takes us through different trials and tribulations, he does that differently with all of us. Because what? We all have different preconceived ideas. We all have different pains and hurts that we are cleaning out of our heart. We have different types of attack. We have different types of destiny. We're all being presented things differently. And God is going to take us through different things so that what? We can overcome and give glory unto him and glory unto the Lord thy God. Well, thanks everybody for, for coming in today, uh, spending time with us uh, with the spiritual fruit of faith. I know we really uh, tried today to, to bring the spiritual fruit of faith into a perception, to, to a vision, an image within yourself about how important it is with your faith projects, how important it is with your other fruit. And if, if you're struggling with some faith projects and, and, and you're looking for some things to happen in your life, I'm asking you to take the time and look at your loyalty that you have with God and situations where you may have dropped your loyalty, your spiritual fruit of faith and, and your loyalty also to the other fruit and producing that in your life and seeing it to be real. And I'm asking you to go out and, 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 and have this real in your life and see it as an opportunity, not as a hurt, not as a weight. And know that you know that you know that you know in your spirit that when you see it this way and when you conquer those things that come in with deception, coming in from darkness that are ever so subtle, that you have produced the spiritual fruit of faith and go boldly into the throne room, into your prayer life and tell God what you did. Tell him what you defeated and what you burnt up that comes against him. And watch things happen in your life. Let's end in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, Yahweh, we just thank you, we worship you, Father. 
as things are being brought to us through your Holy Spirit, Father God. Make it real in our lives as you massaged our hearts through this process. And as we go forward, Father, show us, teach us, and Father, bless us. In Yeshua's name, amen.